Hello and welcome to another episode of Gemstone Mine. I'm John, and if you caught episode 2 of Curbside Pickup, you may have noticed me playing a teamer deck headed by Nissa of Trocken and the Fugitive Doctor. And with that and a few other games under my belt with that deck, I think it's time to go to that most important step of deck building where you do a little bit of tweaking and tuning. Tuning which I plan to do with cards from Commander Cookout Media Group sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com, your source for all your gaming needs. Bloomborough is out by the time this episode is out, and there's some cards from that set that I want, not necessarily for this deck, but other decks I got some uh, plans for, and I'm going to get some cards from Fusion Gaming. You can save some money with the codes that are on your screen, including CCO Summer, which will save you money back on the cards you want to order anyway. Doing so supports the show and other shows here on Commander Cookout Media Group. That's FusionGamingOnline.com, your source for all your gaming needs. So one of the most important things with those initial few games with a new deck is to make sure the deck actually plays the way you want it to play. And I can confirm, Nissa draws an absolutely stupid number of cards, which is fantastic. It's just what I wanted out of the deck. Which means I don't necessarily think I need to worry about having lots of additional ways to see more cards in that deck. Nissa does most of it pretty efficiently. So as I'm doing my tuning, I'm going to look at cards that are mostly just there to see more cards as potential cuts since my commander covers that well. That said, exploration effects prove to be very effective in the deck, as you could see during that opener. Exploration is going to get me additional lands into play, which I have found in many, many different decks to be most effective when you are able to consistently reload your hand with more cards. I also noted that the Peregrine Took combos go really, really well in this deck when it goes off with Nuka-Cola Vending Machine. In fact, I spent two turns in a row going for this combo and getting stopped. Other people knew what it was up to, and they made sure they put a stop to it. The first thing I noted as I was playing this deck, something I didn't plan on necessarily, was just how easy it was to get in for damage with it. Nissa of Draken's other triggered ability that when she attacks, not only does she draw you X cards where X is equal to the number of artifacts you sacrificed, but she also taps down X target creatures, which means there's probably always going to be somebody open for taking damage at the table. I want to take advantage of this and try to pressure life totals even harder, allowing me to use chip-ins and cards like Reckless Fireweaver as a way to potentially really get people's life totals low and force wins. This also means that saboteur type effects, which trigger off of combat damage, may deserve another look. But probably not the ones you're thinking of. Things like Coastal Piracy and Biden Thassa. They are only going to draw one card per creature that connects, which I'm not necessarily sure this deck needs. This deck also would much rather multi-spell than to play a few big haymakers most of the time as recasting a few mana rocks that we got back off of something like Scrap Trawler represent both mana and card draw. The Fugitive Doctor, having a virtual flashback effect, also proved extremely useful and not necessarily in the way that I was planning. The ability to play something like Balaget Recovery to get back an important piece, then flash it back with the Fugitive Doctor on the next turn in order to set up another attempt at a combo, it didn't necessarily win me the game, but it has proven to be very effective. So, on this episode, we have a few to-dos. First, I want to find some cuts to make room for some defensive counterspells, which will hopefully prevent my opponents from winning the game before I do. I also want to look for cuts that will let me side grade and support a more aggressive game plan overall. And finally, I want to find cuts that will let me add in a proper deterministic finisher that I can show the table and say, good game with once I've executed a combo. So if we take a look at our deck list here, there are a few potential cards that I think are pretty reasonable cuts to look at. Uh, Zeusa Lost But Seeking is a really good card, but I'm not so sure I'm eager to keep it in right now. Three mana for one, two does not really support the aggressive game plan we're going for very well. So I'm gonna move that out of the main deck. At the same time, I'm also gonna remove Raghavan, which while it is a really good aggressive early drop, it tends to fall off in effectiveness quite a bit as the game goes on. Even noting that Saboteur effects can be extremely effective, I just don't feel it's worth the top deck later in the game, particularly if I'm not going to be dashing it in very often, which I don't think that I will. 
The next one I think I'm going to cut is Scarecrone. I really like this as part of a Scrap Troller package, but I think it is arguably the weakest of the ones, so I think I'm going to take this one out for now. Uh, next, I think Synth Infiltrator is really cool. This is out of the Fallout decks. It is an artifact creature that is a clone, and it has Improvise, and whatever it clones becomes an artifact. Yeah, that's pretty cool, but I already have Phyrexian Metamorph, and I don't necessarily think I need this one as well. Uh, now, among the instants and sorceries, I think Raven Form is the weakest form of the removal that we have here. We got a lot of potential options, and I think there's something better that we can use that'll also shore up our counterspell game a little bit better. So we're going to remove Raven Form. Next up, among the enchantments, I think, as much as I love Uvenwald Mysteries, this is one of those cards that has been in, like, the 101st, 102nd card on multiple decks I've made before. And I'm a little sad to see it go, but I'm gonna have to cut it. Let's go over to the artifacts next. This is a section I want to keep beefy in this particular deck list. But I gotta say, Alter the Brood, absent other ways to mill my opponents out, doesn't feel great. So I think that's gonna be a cut. Nuka-Cola Vending Machine has been amazing. Lightning Greaves is phenomenal with Nissa of Troc and can get some really explosive starts going. I think I also would cut Scroll Rack here. Don't get me wrong, Scroll Rack is a really good card, but I don't necessarily think Nissa needs help seeing additional cards. I think we can make additional space and try to find some more cards to put in. Now let's start talking about some potential options to replace those cards that we cut. And we could start by just putting in some generically good counter spells. An offer you can't refuse at a single blue mana to counter any non-creature spell at the risk of giving your opponent two treasures. That's a pretty low cost, and there's a reason why this card is often one of the ones considered for a lot of CDH decks. I also think that delay is very nice. One in a blue for a counter spell, which after you counter the spell, its a controller gets to instead suspend it with three time counters. Three turns is basically an eternity in Commander these days. I think that if I'm breaking up a game-winning combo, that's a really reasonable card. I also think that Mana Drain is really cool. Being able to just pay two blue mana and potentially use it as a ritual for the next turn, that's fantastic. And it still just counters a spell. It may be a little too much for what this deck wants to do, but we'll see. Unsubstantiate is another one that I really, really like. Unsubstantiate is an instant for one and a blue, and it says, return target spell or creature to its controller's hand. That can be a nice way to get rid of a problematic creature, or counter a spell, or remand a spell, I guess you would say. We can also consider putting free counters in this place. Foil is an interesting four mana value counter spell, which, eh. You've got to pitch two cards, an island and something else. I'm not sure this deck is going to be able to do it very often. There's the old standbys in CDH of Force of Will, Force of Negation, Mind Break Trap, Pact of Negation. I don't necessarily think I want them for a casual deck, especially not as a package. I think that would be a little bit too oppressive. Misdirection is a really cool card. Three blue blue for an instant with change the target of target spell. It is sweet. It is a way to win Counterspell Wars because you can just pitch a blue card in order to cast it for free. In a lot of ways, it's the budget version of Force of Will. But it's specifically good in CDH because it allows you to win Counterspell Wars by changing the target of somebody else's Counterspell to Misdirection. I don't necessarily think we're going to need in this casual deck, and it's the same reason why I'm not running Deflecting Swat in this list. Finally, Mental Misstep. In casual, I don't expect we're going to have a lot of scenarios where I'm going to need to counter a one-mana value spell to avoid losing the game. I, not, I'm willing to take that risk. I also think it's worth looking at some reusable counter spells. Forbid one blue-blue for an instant with buyback, discard two cards, and counter target spell. That can be pretty nasty and may wind up being a little bit too oppressive. It's not that I don't think the deck is going to have cards to discard or even have access to the mana. Three is a little bit pricey. I don't think cancel's a great rate. And I don't necessarily want to be known as the guy who has a counter spell in hand at all times. It, it's not what I want this deck to be. On the other hand, creatures could potentially be useful. So Glenelendra Archmage is an oldie but a goodie. Three and a blue for a 2-2 flying fairy wizard with blue sacrifice this creature, counter target non-creature spell, and persist. 
So it essentially gives you two bites at the apple, but it costs up to five mana, two of which is blue to counter your first spell. Likewise, there's also Malvolent Hermit, which does the same thing for less mana. It costs one and a blue up front, but instead of having the whole straight counter spell thing, all that it does is it mana leaks, so it's going to cost three mana or that non-creature spell is countered. In addition, it doesn't have Persist. Instead, it has Disturb for two and a blue. The backside is actually really nice as a virtual silence effect, where non-creature spells I control can't be countered. It would be a really nice way for me to make sure that on my combo turn, I'm able to play something out like Nuka-Cola Vending Machine to combo off with Peregrine Took. My god, Universe is Beyond, I never thought I would say that sentence. Combo off with Peregrine Took and Nuka-Cola Vending Machine. Another potential option which plays into our artifact theme would be Wizard Replica. It's kind of similar as it mana leaks any spell instead of just a non-creature spell, but we could also get it back a little bit more easily with cards like Scrap Trawler, Junk Diver, and Mirror Retriever, and we could always just feed it to Nyssa if we want a little bit of extra value. Finally, I looked at something called Null Brooch. This is an old card for four mana, an artifact with two tap, discard your hand, counter target spell. It plays into the Eats Artifacts game plan really well, but with how many cards we draw, we're likely pitching a full grip of seven cards to use it. I think it's going to be really costly to get going, and I don't necessarily want to be in that position. So let's instead look at some of the exploration effects, because I think that this is where we have some real potential, particularly since we cut Azusa Lost But Seeking. We could potentially go bigger and play AC Tyrant of Gyre Straits, but I think six mana value for the additional land drop and the card draw. We don't really need the extra card draw that badly, and six mana value for the extra land drop, I'm not sold on it. Likewise, Mina and Den Wildborn, four mana for a 4-4 is a little bit more on rate for what I'm looking for in terms of aggression. Still gives us an extra land drop, and we can pay green and a red, return a land to our hand to give something trample. I don't really think that the additional trample is needed with how easily Nissa of Trocken can tap down the board. So let's go a little bit bigger and a little bit cheaper and look at Wayward Swordtooth. A 5-5 five, five for three is probably worth it. I think in this deck it's going to be incredibly easy to get the City's Blessing and get the additional ability to swing with a 5-5. Five, five. This is closer to what we want. Why don't we also look at Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. One green, blue for a 6-6. Six, six. When it attacks, or when it enters the battlefield, go ahead, gain three life, draw a card, and you can put in the land from your hand into play. That is really good. Yes, it is going to cost you five cards to escape it out of your graveyard, but I think this deck will have a pretty easy time doing that. Now, the other thing I wanted to look at was having some dedicated slots for finishers in the deck. I think that the all set up stage of the game for this deck is fine. I'm doing a little bit of tweaking to make sure that it has a little bit more action at all phases, but I want to make sure that there is a much more simple and definitive way to close out the game. So in old landfall decks that I've done in this color identity, I've looked at cards like Borborygmos Enraged and Seismic Assault. The creature, Borborygmos, lets you have an activated ability to discard a card to deal three damage to any target, whereas Seismic Assault is only three red mana for an enchantment, with discard a land card to shock something deal to damage. They can be very effective as finishers. I mean, I used to have a Borborygmos Enraged deck, and it was really good. But to make it really deterministic, to make sure you can win with it, you really want to have additional ways to get lands out of your graveyard and back into your hand en masse. So that means you're probably running cards like Creeping Renaissance and Praetor's Council. That's not only a lot of mana, which we may not have on the turn that we're filling up our hand, but it's also a lot of card slots, which are a little precious right now. So I want to look for all other options. A more slot efficient and mana efficient way to do it may be to have additional haste enablers alongside a card like Ayula's Influence. Essentially, a color shifted version of Seismic Assault, where instead of shocking, discarding a land will give us a 2 2 bear token. And enough of those put into play with haste can quickly end the game. And that's a pretty reasonable option, much more slot efficient, and it's a little bit more consistent with what we want during our all setup stage of the game, as pitching additional lands to get additional tokens to feed in for additional damage is not a bad place to be. We could also go with a Brando special and do something like Comet Storm as a finisher. 
The downside to that is most of the combos that we're gonna run to actually get our deck into hand with Paragon Took and Nuka Cola Vending Machine, for example, they don't necessarily give us unbounded mana. Remember, we're gonna get tapped treasure tokens off of Nuka Cola Vending Machine. So Comet Storm and other X spells may not necessarily be the piece we want in terms of dealing unbounded damage. So instead, we could lean a little bit more into the Saboteur angle. Helkai Tyrant is one of my favorite cards that I've never really been able to make work before, and it may not be long for this deck, frankly. But it's six mana for a 6-6 Flying Dragon. Whenever it connects, you get to steal all the artifacts defending player controls. And if you control 20 or more artifacts during your upkeep, you win the game. It's a very telegraphed win condition, but... In its worst case scenario, you're going to just get a bunch of extra artifacts that you can then feed to Nissa to draw a bunch more cards. I expect this is going to be a lightning rod for removal, which is fine by me. It may not be in the deck for very long, like I said, but I, I want to test it out. I also looked at from the new Bloomborough set, Sunspire Lynx. This is the 4 mana 5 4 cat, which says damage can't be prevented, and when it enters the battlefield, each player is dealt an amount of damage equal to the number of non-basic lands they control, which in Commander is going to be a lot. I've seen this compared to Price of Progress, but it deals half as much damage for twice as much mana, which, whatever, the damage prevention clause is going to stick around. It gets around the One Ring and other effects that purely give protection, but it does not get around Teferi's Protection, since Teferi's Protection is going to phase out all of its lands, including its non-basics. So I don't think it's right for this deck, particularly since we're not also on a Team or Saber Tooth plan. Now, one card that is potentially really cool as a finisher in this deck would be Firestorm, a single red mana for an instant, which says, as an additional cost to cast this spell, discard X cards. Firestorm deals X damage to each of X targets. Yes, the X comes from the cards that you discard, not from any amount of mana that you pay. A single red mana is a very low ask for this deck on a turn where it's managed to pick up the entire deck with a Took combo. And that would be such a phenomenal way to end the game. And I get to have a little bit more of that magic hipster cred by playing a card from Weatherlight, which I just realized is older than the average age of the viewers of this deck. Oh god, what a... And those are the cards that I'm interested in adding. I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna have make the cut. I will put the final deck list down in the description of this episode. But if you have any suggestions for things that I might have missed, or if you have some votes for cards that you think should wind up in this deck, or just some questions about the deck, you can find us on YouTube. We're a part of Commander Cookout Media Group. Don't forget to do the like, the subscribe, and leave that comment so I can find out what your questions are. You can also reach out to us on Twitter, where we are at GemstoneMTG, or you can send us an email, GemstoneMindPodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, I'm John, and this is Gemstone Mind.